So we're here with our, our guy Riley for yeah. those watching yeah. the YouTube video. Fair. Uh, be sure to go check out the quarterbacks video. I'll drop a link down in the description. Uh, but we got we got our guy Riley by Master giving us the rundown on these top prospects. We just did quarterbacks. Let's ride into the running backs. Right. So we know we got Bijan mm-hmm. here at number mm-hmm. one. What, what makes Bijan the, the clear cut number one? Is he the one one in super flex drafts? Oh, I don't know. What, what but he'll be one? he'll be top two. It yeah. depends on if if one of those quarterbacks lands in a perfect spot, which is it'll be really tough, right? Mm-mm, if no way, well, so this <laughs> is going to air after. Spot to land, not the perfect spot, but it's a pretty good spot. Uh, it's a it's a pretty good spot, Man. especially if Tony Man. gets his head on straight. And hopefully, yeah. I'm manifesting. But after Kenny Galladay's three touchdown week last week, after I just traded for him, um, that's going to be a great spot to land. He might have but, three targets next week. I'm manifesting. This is in the future. It just happened. I traded for him last week now. I like it. <laughs> but, yeah, Bijan's going to be a top two, but he's probably going 101 in 80% of, of leagues because he is that guy, that Zeke, Saquon tier that we just don't see very often, and he is it. He's so good. Uh, under weaknesses, I do not have any. Under thoughts, uh, fucking awesome. He's great mm. He's great size. He moves. He's powerful. He's going to be the only back to go first round. Less ride with Bijan. He's he's fantastic. So you think you think somebody will break the the back to the first round running back mold with him? Yes, absolutely. He'll go probably Josh Jacobs range like twenty early twenties. But I wouldn't be shocked if he somehow sneaks into twelve or thirteen. Uh, and we don't think that there's any chance that maybe. For what Texas is building with Arch Manning coming, that maybe maybe he gets caught they throw up in, this, him a few in, the, mil. in the Texas hype. He's getting <sighs> Can you imagine? And, and oh, that would be there. that would be perfect. That uh, I would love to see that slap in the face of the entire community. Mm. It would be hilarious well, after kind, popping that's up that's the kind class. Of part of my thoughts here is like, dude, some of these fucking guys are making a ton of money, and if they're really interested in, like, hey, we're just gonna keep making it. Like, you know, Bryce Young is making more money than Jalen Hurts is right now. Like. Like, Unreal. Why? Why? Why not? Uh, some of these guys go back, and then you know. Yeah, I think what it's gonna Nico, be a, Nico I am Oliva just got paid seven and a half million dollars in his senior in high school. Can you imagine if you had seven and a half no, million dollars I in couldn't. high school when you were seventeen? I would be dead. <laughs> I can't even. I don't know. No. I mean, twenty-four-year-old Riley would go nuts, but I don't know what seventeen-year-old Riley would do. Yeah, there'd be a needle in my arm in a gutter. They need to have that shit in a <laughs> trust aggressive. fund. <laughs> yeah, it needs to go into a trust fund that you can't touch yeah. until you're like much older. It's something with big deduction penalties. Get him a <laughs> Nissan Altima and, a, and let him. <laughs> Altima, at least get him. At least get him a Maxima. A Maxima is fair enough. <laughs> Can they even make is Nissan Maxima a thing still? Is that a no those? idea. Yes. Do they? I don't yes. know. A lot of cars are that I that I thought were pretty standard are just not around anymore. Yeah, I mean the I mean the only I mean the only actual car that Ford's gonna make anymore is the Mustang. Yeah. It's strange. Anyhow, moving along. Who's who you got next here? Is it is it uh Gibbs, the transfer from Georgia Tech? Is it um who else? A Jane, what do you got? You're correct. My two is a transfer. It is a transfer, but it is Zach Evans, former TCU transfer. He and he and Jameer Gibbs are really, really close. However, I love Evans as a runner. He, he's got the build. He's smooth. He just finds space. You like the guys who get the ball and go to the open space. It's really hard for some players, even the NFL now, to do that. But damn, Evans is good. He's good at everything he does, all around skill set. He's quick. He's fast. He can shake tackles, good balance. Love Evans, what he brings to the table. He is going to be the guy who probably falls 107, 108, and you'd be pouncing all over it. What What's going to make him fall? He's not one of the sexier names. And because, you know, Bijan's been floating out here for, it seems like, five years now. Right. Jameer Gibbs, the last few years, has been, you know, one of the guys. He's going to be Alvin Kamara. With it, whatever it, that's going to be. honestly could be the same type of value. Literally saw that. that I, literally I, saw that comp today. Okay, I feel like that's what everybody's going to be saying as soon as he. They kind of look similar. They have the turf tape on the back. They of both their went elbows. to Alabama at one point. They, right, <laughs> both like exciting and super smooth with the ball. Good in their pass hand. catchers. So yeah, okay. does everything well. He's he honestly he's going to score you points. 
and that's why we play. Six foot two fifteen. I think that's pretty much what. I'm not sure if that's why some people play. I think it's just all about just like getting draft picks and drafting the next class. I don't think anybody. Sometimes I don't think people want to win, but hey. I know, I know, is, I, know uh, fun. I know guys just kick the can down down to next year. Yeah. Um, yeah. Once this class rolls around, hey, wait till 2027 oh when Archie God. comes out. It's yeah. going to be great. Jeez. 2027? Whenever he's coming out. I don't know when he is. 26. Six? We I, don't know. Know. I was close. We don't know. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, maybe, maybe he stays all four years. So True. Geez, could, could be 28. You said Gibbs is right there with Evan, so I'm going to assume that he's the next guy for you. Yeah, Jameer Gibbs is right there. He's another one who, you know, he's a little bit shorter, but he's muscular. He's quick. Um my only question for him is pass pro just because he's he's one of he's going to be the shorter guys and do you want him getting up in the pads of a 64 270 rusher um but man he's going to be fun right honestly right now could be deandre swiftish like that's his ceiling yeah so he but he's also got a really freaking high floor because he's such a good pass catcher he's going to see the field very early he's another guy who you want the ball and in big situations you're not going to be afraid to give him the ball so you shouldn't be afraid to draft him either yeah, I, I definitely uh, odd, odd, odd choice to go to Georgia Tech. Although I guess they were running that triple option. So I think, oh, I we, feel like he got recruited right, right, right as that. they were right yeah. as they were making that swing, which it's ironically, uh, super he weird. just got fired. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, super but yeah, weird he, to watch them not running the triple option now. Yeah, and then they lose by forty. Yeah. So I don't know. They haven't it, been good for broke. a minute. Like we, you know, I went to Clemson and they were always a tough play when I was going there. And then ever since then, it hasn't really. Yeah, been I mean, it's never fun to play an option. Team. Even a question mark. Georgia Tech, Georgia Tech, and the and the military schools. We started playing like triple option teams in our like for our throwaway games to like prep to play Georgia Tech. Probably like, like VMI, Citadel, all the the schools yep. in that area. And yeah. honestly, shout, shout out to hometown tough. Bulldogs. <laughs> Man, fuck the Citadel. <laughs> hey, one of their linebackers came up and opened a savings account with me the other day. Real nice. Well, game. all right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> um, all right. So, is it who's the next guy? Bigsby, uh, Tucker. Well, if people are catching on to your pattern here, you're going to know it's not one of those two guys. It's not those guys because we have the list in front of us of who it's going to be. Well, this this is another guy who Carbonet, Carbonet. Yeah, Charbonnet, big name last year, <laughs> shocked the world by coming back. But I think uh, it's going to get more common. Really fun combination of balance and shiftiness. He can make you miss both ways. He can run down your face, or he can make you miss. It's it's really fun to watch. He's a chunk guy, always going to get four or five yards. Really freaking good player. The thing for him is going to be he's more of a landing spot scheme dependent guy. Yeah, so it, seems he, like it, it, it seems like he's another one of these like not super sexy guys. Like he's not correct. the home run hitter. He's gonna be like you just said that team that that wears down a defense and just like kind of just like like you said the chunk guy. He's not getting he's not gonna be the home run hitter. He's gonna he's gonna get five six yards a carry every play. So I mean, yep. that, honestly, if if you remember like Tevin Coleman in Atlanta, yeah, he was high floor. Low ceiling, but he scored you 13 points a week. Tevin Coleman was a home run hitter at Indiana. It, so super, was uh, Sony Michelle. Team. Yeah. Like kind of that nice. same. So like was CJ Procise. Huh? Oh, that was what that that hurt big my heart. for me. I love Procise. Uh, go Irish first off, but uh, man, Procise. Ooh, had what it. about? Oh, we love we love some Notre Dame uh, running backs there. We, we had Dex. Oh, then, Dex was a good one. And then one. my he boy Josh Adams. <laughs> Adams was another big one. Those are all big dudes. The yeah, Notre Dame's got a guy right there now, a freshman, who's that same mold. It's like 5'11", 230, Whew. dump truck. Josh Adams got his shine for, for a minute. Oh, I loved, I, I loved Josh Adams. Jonas Gray back in the day. Mm. Shout out to Hurley, who <laughs> he, had a weird obsession with that and guy. he blocked him. Yeah, and then he blocked him, probably for the opposite reason that most people get blocked. But. Predatory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, after Charbonnet, that's where that's where we've got the Tank Bigsby sliding in. 
Um, I saw might Hurley's surprise back. People. I saw Hurley's back, by the way. Hurley's back. Great to have him. Phenomenal dude. I love him. Yeah. Um, U- Uncle Hurley brought me into the Dynasty community when I was 16, and that was that's predatory. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why Jonas great block. Yeah. <laughs> no, only only good things to say about Hurley. He's a good dude. He um, he tried yeah, to buy tank- us out. So. <laughs> But uh, Tank Bigsby at five, like my first line kind of sums him up. Hard-nosed, tough runner who likes to plant with force, yet quick jerky movements. He runs like Devin Singletary, but Tank's bigger. Mm. Um, It just seems like Auburn doesn't want to give him the ball. I don't know what Auburn wants to do. I mean, they need to fire Brian Harson, but that's I think every Auburn fan and the college football community as a whole realize. Well, I have I have a buddy who works at Auburn, so I won't come out and say anything negative. But they're frustrating sometimes to watch. But just I mean, take I the watched ball. The whole, I watched the whole game of them, and they didn't. I think Bigsby had like nine touches. Right. It's kind of what the Colts did the first two weeks when Jonathan Taylor wouldn't get in the ball, and then you're loose. And why are we losing? I don't know. Let's give it to our best Not player. Best player of the ball. Right, yeah. so and some Tank's going to be another one that's going to be a landing spot guy. If he lands in a great spot, boost him up. If he lands in a murky spot, just beware, buyer beware. So you, you, you is, he, is he a more first and second down kind of guy, or is you think he can be a three down guy? My thing is it's so inconsistent right now. Like we we, I, I want to see him catch the ball more. He he can catch. You it's think just that's a because little, of what's going on in Auburn. Very well could be, yeah. and that's it's so hard to project. Is a guy going to catch? Because we thought Sony Michelle was going to be, you know, DeAndre Swift level of catching the ball, mm-hmm. and well, no, then Nick Chubb is now the pass catcher consistently, and Michelle is the plotter. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that's so hard to predict, and it's I don't love to do it anymore, but it it's a it's a concern right now just something to keep an eye on he does have 40 catches through three seasons obviously 22s were short into that one so i know How people many, don't care about what's his highest in a season yeah, what's, what's his highest in a season 20 in last that, year that, and he's that, already that's, got half the, threshold. that's, that's, that's the, threshold. the threshold man he can catch that's the zach, he can catch. Nah, that's people, the zach reed threshold people yes, don't care about the number of catches it's just the target share i think zach I think, I think zach did the numbers and he said 83 percent of pass running backs who catch 20 passes will catch like 40 balls in in the nfl that's pretty good you could say your r squared is 0.8 good very pi, close pi r squared let me check that uh, <laughs> <laughs> um yeah kenny walker's about to smash that mold so. Woo! Boom. boom five catches already through two games yeah, love games. love 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 that guy oh, kenneth walker remember the, when devonta smith was too small to be any good remember that Remember when Kenneth Walker couldn't catch any balls? He has hands. Love it. All right. Who's next? Next is Sean Tucker. There we go. Mis- Mr. Home Run Guy. Yeah. He is... Sex appeal here. He he <laughs> and, is sex appeal. And he gives but a good it's... breakdown of his performances after each game, which you have <laughs> to appreciate. He? Oh, yeah. You got to go look <laughs> at it. Oh, my gosh. You got to go look at those. Sean Tucker is like a really good OnlyFans account <laughs> from, uh, from, from, you know... From what I hear, it's uh, it's you, you love what you see. But they give really good detail, and you're gonna keep going back to it because <laughs> it's solid. So that's that's what Sean Tucker is. But he's uh, he's a guy who's gonna struggle to get on the field early. He's gonna be probably the smaller one A or one B rather. So he's gonna be early down, but maybe in a timeshare. Um, but man, he's he can take it to the house. Yeah, he's a and threat. Love to see it. He's going to be inconsistent producer, but he's going to have he's going to have a, a massive ceiling. Yeah, he can pop. So, he, he he can pop one. He can pop one, but he also could be seven carries, thirteen yards, and no catches. And you're sitting here going, "Well, a loss." Yeah, this, so this last game, uh, I don't think it was great. Yeah, against I think against Purdue is it, it was pretty similar. Yeah. Um, you know yeah. he's got he's got to get going before he can he can go, so he's not he totally opposite of Zach Charbonnet, right? Charbonnet is going to be right. no matter how many carries he's going to have that times four and a half for his yardage. But Tucker he could have ten carries and seventeen yards. Need to establish so, him, get him rolling. He is bizarro Zach Charbonnet. If I have any Seinfeld fans out there, he's yeah. he's the bizarro world. <laughs> he's the Wario to Zach Charbonnet's Mario. You lost me there. I, that I don't. I don't know. Over my head. Let's stick with Seinfeld. Mario. Let's stick with Seinfeld. Let's stick with Seinfeld. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Tucker's there at six. Devin Chain is kind of in that same mold. That's why Devin is at seven. 
a um, little bit of a smaller guy. And just Devin, and Devin rhymes with seven. It does. It does rhyme with seven. Um, excellent insight, Matt. <laughs> um, That's why we have him here. <laughs> but if you want to think usage right now, Tony Pollard, he's going to have the same role. Ah, well, that same producer, another same producer. But hey, he had a good I game mean, on Monday. Good player. He, he's really fun. Track background, so he's going to probably test pretty well. Oh, he's, he's going to test through the roof. He's going to run a four three, and his three cone is going to be sub six eight. Sub six eight five. It'll be it'll be really really quick. He's he's an athlete, oh, super cool. fun, but he's not going to get twenty touches a game, so don't expect it. Yeah, so it could be you know, Pollard could be so useful in fantasy if if you could just get like the all the promise passing usage that they've promised for the last three just years. Just play him in the damn slot. The just, well. When you have Noah Brown in your offense, it's <laughs> hard to throw the ball away from Noah Brown. That's that's factual. I can finally say it. It's that's, been five or six years coming, but <laughs> damn it, we made it. We did. We did. Pro or Noah it. Brown, pop off. Bro. <laughs> All right, that's right. <laughs> that's um, right. So no Deuce Vaughn in these in this top seven. Oh man, he's. I probably should have. I, I should have had him on the list. But another guy who he is small, not going to see consistently sixteen to twenty touches a game. But it also wouldn't shock me if somebody gets hurt above him next year on a depth chart and then he's popping off and everybody's wondering why weren't we hiring this guy? He's another just good football player, does everything well. Hit me hit me with a couple more running back names that you that you like. A big sleeper who I really, really enjoy is Rasheen Ali from Marshall. I'm a big fan he, of Ali as well too. He was in my conference well, for Shrine Bowl. Convenient. Until Marshall bolted and went to the Sun Belt. But Ali is really, really good. Shout out Charles Huff. Head coach of Correct. Marshall. Um, who beat Notre Dame, who beat my Irish. That was a shame. Former Penn State running back coach, Charles Huff. Oh, I didn't know that. Interesting. Good nugget. But yeah, Marshall's really, or uh, Ali's really, really good. He can, quite frankly, do it all. But his thing right now, big question is going to be pass pro. So once he solves that up, he's got a shot to be a top four, top five guy in the class. Uh, probably not off the bat but he's going to pop at some point in his career, no matter what. So he's really fun. Um, a guy who's sneaky is Dwayne McBride. I don't love him, but he runs the shit out of the ball. Uh, pretty solid balance, really good power, uh, really good movement skills, but fumbling is going to be his problem. So that's why he's going to be a little lower, but those, those are two guys to so just keep an eye out for, you know, wherever they land, throw them on a roster there. They'll probably produce at some point. How about my guy, Cameron Peoples? I haven't seen Peoples yet. So I, I've, I've just started getting back into everyone else, all the other conferences, but uh, I haven't seen him as of now, but I hear really good things, and that App State team is a blast to watch, even though Chase Bryce is 30. Uh, <laughs> they're still winning Shout games. Shout out Clemson. And, <laughs> shout out Clemson. But, yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're fun to watch, but I haven't, haven't seen a lot of Peoples yet. Yeah, it's just 6'2", 225. He's had a lot of a lot of big runs throughout this. Uh, oh, uh, so I didn't know he was that here. big. That's the the big running back is going to make a return to the NFL very soon. Why do you say they're, that? I'm just curious. They're, they're lacking them right now. There are very few big backs. And the NFL is cyclical. Now we're all the RPO. Everybody's got to run a 4-3. Oh, he runs 4-3? We'll take you even if you suck. Um it's, it's the, that old man, whole, but it's the Bill Belichick rule. You zag when everyone else zigs. And yeah. I think it's going to eventually get back to, well, Nick Chubb's running all over us. You know, Jonathan Taylor's running all over us. We need big guys in the box. So now the offense are going to say, okay, we'll need big backs. We need at least one of them, right? We're, we, we want at least one big dude to carry the ball 10 times, right? It's the, it's like when you play Navy, what, there was a stat where the week after you play Navy, your winning record was like, I don't know, sub 400. It's almost that same mindset to, or, or that same you know thing where once you get beaten down, the next guy's going to run right by it. So it's kind of that same mindset. So I think it's going to make a comeback in the next couple of years. So I think I think there's an interesting there's an interesting theory kind of like that Penn State was doing a couple of years ago with with Noah Kane, and what they would do is is they would play Noah Kane in the fourth quarter, and he would like serve as like the closer for running backs. So I love that be it. like having like a like like a bullpen of running backs where you're just like, all right, here's your middle reliever. Here's your you, you have your starter here. He comes in. Where's the defense? You have another guy and he comes in, 
get, gets a breath of fresh air, but then you got that bulldozer who comes in, and when your team is really beaten down in the fourth quarter, you get the 6'2", 230 guy who can comes in there with, with fresh legs and just... I mean, why don't why, I mean, why don't NFL teams just do that? I've always wondered why Derrick Henry wasn't used more in that regard. It seems like you watch Henry, he's got eight yards after the first quarter and a half, but then he gets... Yeah. 90 to 120 yeah, yards yeah, like in Lenny, freaking 10 minutes. Yeah, Lenny used to do that too. He he would bust off that 70 yard that 70 yard rush in the fourth quarter after he 100%. had 10 carries for 2 yards. I don't know. It's a good thought. It, it's a really good thought. Uh, but then again, a lot of these guys it takes them a while to get in a groove. And I feel like that's yeah, very right. common yeah. with running backs. That's kind of what I was going to yeah. end with on that thought. I think there there is certain guys that can play that way. Well, but you, I got, think, well you got to give him the bullpen, his bullpen reps. Yeah. You got to have, you got to have the, you got to scout team yeah, exactly, smashing yeah. them into there. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Uh, how, how about the USC running back? Uh, Travis die. Any, any thoughts on him? He, man, I, he's one that I think a lot of teams just aren't going to know where to slot. Does a lot of things. Well, very capped ceiling. Yeah. But with that, he's, he's weird because he also has a very low floor. So, it, he's going to be one of those assets, if you want to say, where, well, low ceiling, low floor, probably not going to be a big time producer. Um, maybe I'm wrong in that. Maybe he finds a sort nice. Like spot. Ingram. How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> I was waiting for it. I have another drop Ingram <laughs> recently. Um, so did I dropped him. I had to oh, drop you dropped him. him? Oh, dude, that sucks. I feel like that's like. Well, that's because that, that league won't flowers. expand the goddamn rosters. <laughs> uh, no comment there. You need more roster um, spots for like shitty players. 25 team, 25 man rosters. It's bigger than FFPC. Bullshit. He's definitely not getting rostered in FFPC. Oh, bro. Um, last yeah. two guys here, Riley. I mean, we talk about the big name schools. What about with Kenny McIntosh, Jason McClellan? I mean, they're, I mean, they're going to play 14, 15 games this year. So they're again two more who probably are going to be drafted earlier than you think because are they really getting, freaking are, good. Are they? Are they? Are they good? Or are they getting helmet scouted? I think they're they're good. I think McClellan's better. Yeah. Um, I think it's safe to say that right now, but there again, yeah, that's that bad I, run he had so against Texas weird. was dirty. He, he saw how fast and explosive he was. Just gone. I mean, he's got more juice than Jameer Gibbs, right? I mean, more. Maybe I shouldn't say juice because Gibbs is super explosive and his burst is really good. But Gibbs probably has above average long speed, whereas McClellan is. You can comfortably say he is a good long runner. Probably good to very good to excellent in some cases. But I, those guys are so hard to project. Honestly, those are the landing spot guys. We are like, hey, okay. uh, one of these guys lands in Baltimore. I'm on it. Um, you know, Vegas is another one. Kind of the same spots where people landed this year. And if nobody does anything, they're going to take another one next year. So yeah, if, he, if they land in Baltimore, though, it might hurt your J.K. Dobbins versus Daryl Henderson bet. I don't know. Damn right. <laughs> what about uh, another good landing spot would be Tennessee. I mean, Henry's certainly not getting any younger, but... Hilliard and Haskins. Yeah, 100%. So that's what – backs are going to see a really big turnover. Yeah. I at think that's some a, point yeah. in the next one and I, a half years. I think it's next year. It's, it's been – You're probably right. It's the same situation as the McCaffrey, Mixon, Cook class where it seems like those guys came in, Kamara, Hunt, geez, and they took over. Yeah. yeah. We, I, this, we haven't had – This might the, be the next yeah. – We haven't cycle. had the changing of the guard. We've, we've thought we might have it. We thought, you know, Montgomery's been – been fine but has you know that, that that miles montgomery jacobs they haven't really taken it over ceh didn't do anything for you jk and acres have both been kind of hurt we haven't really so, gotten yeah, in there yeah um but so we're, we're dying for it like it's it's it, it's so necessary like barkley's kind of been in and out and it's like you go through the the running backs in fantasy and it's like good luck man like it's very, yep. very uh, same. Same that. can be said with the quarterback class. There are a lot of quarterbacks hanging around now where you watch games on Sunday and you're thinking, how are these guys starting every week? I yeah. mean, it's, it's brutal now. The so, upper is mean, better than the uppers ever been. But like the, back the low has is, been really low. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean, when, you, when, you, when you watch Geno Smith play. Exactly. I mean, they're going to be they're going to be new starters in Seattle, New Orleans, Carolina, Giants, <laughs> Carolina, um, Maybe Even, Indy, maybe Houston, it, it, maybe Atlanta. 
maybe even Vegas at some point. I mean, they're 0 and 3, only team who hadn't won a game yet. So, I mean, there are so many spots like that with quarterback and running back where Orleans? it could be. San Fran. New Orleans? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, it, it'll be fun to watch. It'll, it'll be really fun. Tampa, even? Yeah, Tampa's going to Yeah, Tom's not coming back. He's getting Tommy. the shit beat out of him right now. Tom is- well, Andy's, Andy's about to get paid an ass load to go work at where at Fox? Uh, one yeah, of them. Fox, I don't know. Fox, for sure. Yeah. So, it, it'll be fun. It, it's going to be a really fun next 24 months. All right. Well, I think that puts a bow on the running backs. Yeah. Let's shift to the wide receiver. Members. 